What the devil's personality is like isn't a big issue. According to the Bible, he came only for the purpose of stealing, murdering, and destroying. On this same note, the Lord goes on to say, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it to the greatest degree possible until it overflows. Because you are a child of God, you are one of the people for whom he came and he will undo all of the wicked acts that the devil has done. God's love and power can and will restore all the enemy has stolen, killed or destroyed in your life. We'll take Job's character from the Bible as an example. According to the Bible, he had seven sons and three daughters, 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 5,000 yoke of cattle and 500 donkeys, as well as a large number of servants. He was the most popular person among all of the people who lived in the eastern region. The devil on the other hand was not happy, and he sought permission to torture Job's life. I'd want you to pay close attention to two points. The first reason is that the devil is not happy when you succeed. And he is pleased when God's children who are tormented blaspheme God in their misery as Job was encouraged to do. And the second point is that, knowing that God is sovereign and supreme and that nothing happens without his permission and without his word. Even though the devil attempted to do evil in the hopes of causing God to lose a faithful follower, the situation was used to strengthen and build Job's faith in God. So keep that in mind. So, what precisely has the devil taken away from you? Is it a source of joy for you? Is it your serenity or your hope that you seek? Is the devil trying to steal you of your hope? And I want you to know that this may be as a consequence of his frequent reminders of individuals you've lost to death, or broken relationships, or friendships that have come to an end. For example, it may manifest itself as excessive concern over what to eat drink and dress. All of these are extra factors that may have a negative impact on your happiness. The devil may even attempt to operate by adopting the position of accuser of the brethren and reminding you of all of your past mistakes and seeming flaws. When this happens, you may be tempted to go about with your head down in shame or guilt, depriving yourself of the joy of redemption and the freedom that Christ has given. However, I strongly advise you to reject the devil's offer. It's conceivable that the devil has snatched your tranquility. Worry has a part as well. Then there's the issue of anxiety, and in rare occasions fear. When any of these factors are prominent in your life, it is difficult to retain calm. If you're familiar with the scriptures, you've surely seen the irony of the situation. One method is provided for fending off any of them. And it is the person of Jesus who among many other things, is a father and a friend. Is it your joy that has been taken away from you? You should not be worried about tomorrow because if Christ can care for the birds in the sky and the flowers in the field, which seem to be insignificant elements of his creation, he is more than capable of supplying all you need. According to Paul, my Lord will provide for all of your needs as a result of his great riches in Christ Jesus. He made you and he is aware of your desires which he will endeavor to meet. He has promised to be near the brokenhearted and asks that you cast all of your concerns upon him because he loves you and does not want you to suffer unnecessarily in your life. He also extends to you his tranquility which is unfathomable to human beings, the one who gives but not in the way in which the world gives. And yes, you would have realized that they are drawn from the Bible which should come as no surprise considering that the Bible is our guide to living. It contains information and directions for every area of your life no matter what you are going through. The aim is to have the Bible close at hand and to put faith in God's word. It is this that the devil tries to get in the way of every time he steals anything from you. He desires for you to be thrown down in despair, fear, worry, guilt, humiliation, and a number of other emotions in order to create a break in your relationship with the Father. Because he recognizes the immense strength, and ability you possess when you remain connected to the source. Even if we don't realize it, it is human nature to want to be separated from God. His speech becomes muffled as you get suffocated by your anxieties. So to counter the devil's theft, you must make a conscious effort on your part to remain close to the Father no matter what happens, and to remind yourself of all of his promises. You also like Job in the Bible have the option of asking questions when they arise, but don't lose sight of God's unwavering commitment. It allows you to hold on and remain firm in the promises he has given to you. He promised to give you life until it spilled in places where the devil's theft had resulted in death. Yeah, as a result, you should be able to grow and become more productive. That instruction is essential in all area of your life not only when children are around. God wants you to develop and flourish to the point that when people look at you, 
They see his glory reflected in your life. The devil's thievery will attempt to drain your power in order to render it sterile in places where there should be life and growth. That on the other hand is not God's intent. And all it takes is your confidence in him and a reminder of who he has been for you, where he has brought you from, and his faithfulness to stand, to stand on and believe his promises. His promises of restoration of a new faith that turns out to be much more than the devil believes he has stolen. And as you'll see in the book of Job's conclusion, the Lord blessed Job's latter half of life was more than the first. In addition to his seven sons and three daughters, he possessed 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels, 1,000 oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And this was on top of everything else he already had. It was really two times as much. And God promises you in his word that he will do something new in the desert including the creation of streams. He has the capacity to do the apparently impossible. He will bring hope to places and situations that seem to be hopeless. Don't give up hope. Refuse to allow the enemy to have complete control over your life and emotions. Trust God and his promises to restore everything that the enemy has stolen from you, and allow him to lead you through the process. May God provide for you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. The time has come for you to be elevated, promoted, and made relevant in the world. And now, God is bringing you to the attention of the world for everything you've ever endured. He has looked at you with pity and kindness in his eyes. He is now attempting to turn the tables around for you. Maybe failure or dishonor or being ridiculed are all things that your family and friends see you experiencing right now. Maybe shame and disappointment are all around you. But let me tell you this. God is lifting you up from the dunghill, and he will take you to the mountaintop. He's transforming your narrative from something that men despise into something that they desire, and actively seek out and pursue. Anything in your life that represents humiliation will be turned around. Your tears will be wiped away even if you've sobbed quietly and in secret. Additionally, he will bestow upon you a wonderful and enticing quality in addition to restoring the years that have been devoured by locusts, cankerworms, pomerworms, and caterpillars. The wonderful things that he will accomplish on your behalf will bring you pleasure, happiness, and renown. You will be a man of pleasure, happiness, and renown. Therefore, you should not allow yourself to become discouraged or demoralized. Allow yourself to shine because the Lord is removing your shame and elevating you to prominence. So do not be afraid or dismayed. He'll get you out of the prison and put you in the limelight for the rest of your life if you let him. In exchange for your old clothes, he'll provide you with regal ones that you'll look forward to wearing time and time again. He's going to turn you into a star and propel you to new heights in his time. He's going to completely transform your life. It won't be long before he begins to make a difference in your life as well. God in his infinite wisdom and power will take care of everything that has been bothering you for the past few months. Wait and see as he turned things around in your favor in this situation. To put it another way, God is a compassionate and forgiving father. We children on the other hand can be proud of him because he will not allow us to be ashamed of ourselves. We believe that he is our God and he desires to demonstrate to the rest of the world that we are his chosen children. As a result, you will not be ashamed because your heavenly father will not be ashamed. God will take away any guilt you may have felt in the past. The father has promised his children a better and more promising future. He is not the type of God who lies. It is his responsibility to see to it that we become everything he has planned for us. Individuals who have gone through your situation can be found in the Bible. That is to say, if you believe you have reached the end of your life because of anything that has caused you to feel humiliated in your life, you should rethink your position. The truth is, you will go through a process to get from where you are now to where God wants you to be and what he has planned for you in your future. Even the most difficult events that occur in your life today, no matter how difficult it may be to accept, will all work out to your advantage in the long run. The feeling of guilt that you are currently experiencing will pass in a blink of an eye. God's wonder and grace on the other hand, will take you to new heights of achievement that you could never have imagined possible before. The fact that you are going through what you are going through does not necessarily imply that your journey has come to an end. According to what the scripture tells us, you have a bright future ahead of you. No plan of God is intended to bring about agony and humiliation. 
His intentions toward us as he stated in the Bible are to provide us with a sense of hope for the future. His plans are not of evil. So whatever appears to be the case right now in your life, be rest assured that things are about to change dramatically. Awaiting, anticipating and expecting. Don't be discouraged. Your hopes will not be dashed. Yes, your hopes will not be dashed. Let's be honest. Feeling ashamed is something that no one wants to go through in their lives. But the truth is that we will all have to deal with it at some point in our life. At the very least, it isn't going to be around forever, which is a positive thing to know. Our future hope is based on faith and in the knowledge that God has something wonderful in store for us. Christ endured great anguish and humiliation while nailed to the cross in order to prepare himself for his upcoming trial. Be inspired by Christ and believe that something wonderful is in store for you. He was under the impression in exchange for our short-term suffering. We will receive an immeasurable reward that will last for all time. The ashes of your guilt will be transformed into something truly magnificent. Instead of crying, you'll burst out laughing instead. Standing in front of kings and princes will not be a difficult task for you. Take into consideration the fact that, no matter where you find yourself, others are looking to you to be a beacon of light for them. You are a city built on a hill and that's exactly who you are. Some of you may be wondering how it is possible to shine in a world that is filled with misery and adversity. I understand your concern, but as a result of what God will do in your You'll notice that people will be eager to establish connections with you. God will bring about a transformation in those areas of your life that seems hard. Examine the lives of biblical characters who were humiliated before God elevated them to the status of honor. You will benefit from this in terms of your spiritual well-being and reassurance that you are in the right place and time. And instead of allowing you to go unnoticed, God will make you relevant. Remember Jephthah. He was one of the biblical characters who witnessed and overcame humiliation and ostracism. He was forced to leave his hometown as a result of this. He was the son of a prostitute, and his half-brothers were the sons of his father's wife. After some time had passed, his half-brothers determined that it was time for him to leave. It was because of his mother's past that he was mistreated by the other children. That's exactly what they wanted, so he was compelled to comply. They wouldn't let him stay any longer. But instead of focusing on his failure, I want you to concentrate on God's plan for him. God's plan for him on the other hand remained the same even after he left his family and went somewhere else. The people of the country begged him to come and lead them into battle, promising to make him their leader if he was victorious. The way God transformed his life was incredible to witness, wasn't it? Have you noticed how God wiped away his tears with the palm of his hand? Isn't it amazing how the Lord has cleansed him of all of the shame and contempt that he carried with him from his past? Have you witnessed his transformation into a different person and subsequent rise to fame? Taking over as a leader was a monumental achievement for Jephthah. During this time period, he underwent some sort of transformation. When he was younger, they used to yank him out the door and throw him outside. The Lord on the other hand, intervened and elevated him to a position of prominence in society. It wasn't until after the event that he gained popularity as a sought-after resource for the people. This means that no matter what you've been through or are going through from individuals in your life right now, whether they're relatives or close friends, the Lord will turn your story around. Just put your faith in him. He'll change your identity and make you relevant in order to get you out of your humiliation. He did it for Jephthah and he is willing to do it for you as well. He is always ready to help. So, why do you persist in sobbing uncontrollably all the time? What is it about you that makes you feel the need to bow your head in shame? Wipe the tears from your eyes to regain your composure and calmness. The time has come for you to be lifted. That which you have been looking forward to has finally come to you. Hallelujah. Then there's the question of whether or not you remember Hannah. Hannah has also dealt with feelings of shame and embarrassment in the past according to 1 Samuel 1. Because she was childless, her co-wife Peninel treated her as if she were filth and made fun of her on a regular basis. She cried uncontrollably all the time. It was a recurring thing throughout her season of barrenness. But the Almighty God remembered her and extended kindness to her. By the grace of God, she was blessed with a son and several other children. Consequently, she was no longer referred to as a childless woman. 
Instead, she was recognized as the mother of a large number of children. God wiped away her tears and put an end to the threats from her adversary. In the process, God also removed the burden of her grief and transformed her from an object of ridicule into a woman who can confidently proclaim and say yes, the Lord has done it for me. A large number of people were aware of her son's existence. Prophet Samuel, one of the greatest prophet that ever graced the earth. It's no surprise that she was well known. God rescued her from the trash and elevated her to a position of prominence. He is truly a magnificent God, the creator of the universe. Hallelujah. So please be encouraged and trust in the same God who provided a way for Hannah and Jephthah. Do you believe that he will provide for you too? Yes, he will. God will take advantage of your embarrassment for your own good. Aside from rescuing you from trouble, he'll also help you and turn your shame to fame as a result of his power. So make a firm determination that this is your time. Hallelujah.